Hello viewers, today in this video I would like to give a simple overview and demonstrate my homemade fireworks firing system. Now, if you found this video, I'm going to wager that you're already familiar with firing systems or their purpose, but just in case you are not, what a fireworks firing system is, is it's basically a either simple or complicated, they can be both. Uh, electronic device that can shoot off fireworks or pyrotechnics uh, automatically. You could either click buttons to shoot off the cues or uh, electric matches one by one or some firing systems have very complicated scripting abilities where you can program your show to music and choreograph everything really amazing. Anyways, so my homemade firing system dubbed the flash fire <laughs> uh, is basically a custom circuit board that interfaces with a Raspberry Pi microcomputer and it runs a Python based program which controls everything so I have this 3d printed enclosure right here and it's got three simple indicators on the top for the firing status the arming status and the power along this side it's got inputs to talk to the Raspberry Pi, so it's got cutouts for the network and USB connections. It's got a simple 5 volt USB power in, two banana jacks for daisy chain input, which I'll explain a little bit later, and then an arming key switch, which allows you to arm and disarm the system. Right now I am powering the system off of a 5 volt battery bank. Uh, this is just one you can get from Amazon. And then for the igniter power, it simply uses common, standard, run-of-the-mill 9-volt batteries. If we walk around to the front, so on the front here, we have cues 1 through 64 uh, labeled on each port. And each port is simply a regular RJ45 jack, which uses a shielded network cable to interface with the small igniter PCB. The cable must be shielded as that is what carries the ground return path to the igniters. Today I'm going to be testing some firewire initiator, is what they're called, electric matches. What they are is just little pieces of wire of a little tiny chip covered in biotechnic compound and when you apply electricity to them they just make a little spark. So I have those wired in here. For the test, I'm going to be shooting off four of them in a combination of manually and also automatically. And then I'm also going to test whether it's possible to fire two of them wired in parallel wiring configuration. So how this thing talks to your control or host computer is you simply run a wired network connection between the Raspberry Pi and your computer of choice. Okay viewers, what you're looking at now is the desktop of my host control PC or laptop and I have the Raspberry Pi and the Flashfire system plugged into it and what you can do from here is use any remote desktop client for Windows to remote control the Raspberry Pi and access the application inside of it that allows you to control the system. So I have my static IP portal to the Raspberry Pi here and when I open that up it will take you to the Raspberry Pi desktop. From the desktop of the Raspberry Pi we can open up the flash control Python based application which is a graphical user interface with a whole bunch of buttons uh, that allow the user to control the flash fire firing system. So I will open that and there is a quick loading screen before you can get to anything. And it takes you to the main page here where it prompts the user to choose from three different modes of operation uh, from the mode drop down box here. You could do continuity mode which tests the presence of any electric matches or igniters plugged into the Q slots. Auto firing mode, which is a pre-programmed sequence where you could put in delay times between the cues and essentially synchronize 
your show to music, and also manual firing mode, which allows you to one by one individually fire off each cue. And that is actually where I will start. So to test my cues that I currently have plugged in, uh, first thing you have to do is choose a firing pulse time or impulse time, which simply is the amount of duration that the voltage is applied to each electric match. So from here you can choose all the way from really quickly, one millisecond, all the way up to one second. And I have tested this system with one millisecond and unfortunately it is just too fast of a time for the circuitry on my custom PCB in the flash fire system to switch around the cues. So for the purposes of this test and video, I will choose the 10 millisecond time. And I should note that there's many error handling and safety features uh, built in place that prevent the users from making any mistakes and the software working really well. So if you don't have a impulse time selected and you try and arm the system and fire a cue, there will be a warning that prompts the user to first fire a impulse time. So I'm going to choose a 10 millisecond impulse time and I have the key switch on the system set to the arm position. Uh, that is another feature. If you do not have the key switch set to the arm position and you try and fire a cue, uh, it'll disable everything and tell the user that the system is currently disarmed. So resetting the key switch and making the system live, uh, I'm going to fire off cue number two which is a single, uh, single electric match with a 10 millisecond impulse time. So in the lower right hand corner of the screen on the video overlay, you should see Q number two fire off in three, two, one. And uh, that worked great as you could see. In each firing mode, there is also a status box down here which shows you the status of each Q when it was fired the time and also the duration that it was uh, chosen at that time. So from here I'm going to reset all of this and then attempt to fire cues number one, three, and four in rapid succession using the fire all cues mode. To reset the manual firing mode or any of the modes it requires you to go back to the main menu and then choose that mode again and that will clear out the memory and allow the user to refire everything. Also, one thing to note is the software is kind of buggy and ideally when the system is armed, each one of these buttons should light up green, but they do not. I don't know why that is, but it is not that big of an issue. So with the 10 millisecond impulse time and the system still set to the arm position, uh, I'm going to click fire all cues and it's going to ask you, are you sure? And when I click yes, it should fire off everything I have plugged in in rapid succession. So firing in three, two, one. And as you can see, that was really fast and uh, that did work. It fired off cues number one, three, and four, one after another. My final test is going to be to fire off cue number eight, which as I mentioned previously, it has two electric matches wired in parallel configuration to it. And I'm going to reset the manual, manual mode once again, arm the system, and with a 10 millisecond impulse time, I'm going to fire off cue number eight in three, two, one, and that worked as well. So that concludes the manual firing mode, and from here we can step into the auto firing mode from auto fire mode, there's many different ways that you can control a pre-programmed sequence. So the first step is the user must load in a text file, which contains 64 individual lines with delay times, which represents the timing between each queue and the other and so on. So I loaded in an example file, and as you can see, it's gonna wait 16 seconds after queue number one to fire queue number two. 15 seconds after cue number two to fire cue number three, and so on and so on. So we can arm the system from here and select start sequence, and that'll start the sequence. Uh, or, as previously mentioned earlier, you could also enable the daisy chain input. 
which allows you to take the last cue or electric match from one flash fire system and plug it into the banana jack inputs on the second flash fire system and that will trigger the sequence to start once that cue goes. So that only works if this checkbox is enabled right here. And once that is ena enabled and you press start sequence, the system will just wait there indefinitely until it receives a trigger signal. And in this mode, uh, you must load in a delay times file before anything will work. If not, there will be an error message. It also, just like manual mode, you must choose an impulse time and the system must be armed. So going back to the main menu, the last mode of operation for the system is continuity mode. And in continuity mode, once you click the begin continuity test button, it'll step through each queue and check the presence of any electric matches or igniters plugged in. So currently, all the electric matches are spent, so there should not be any continuity on any of them. So if I click begin continuity test, it will step through each queue one by one. And if it is present, the label will light up green. If it isn't, everything will stay white. So as I said, uh, there is no continuity on any of the queues. So that concludes the three modes of operation and the flash control software, and also the basic overview of the flash fire system. I uh, appreciate you watching this video. Let me know if there's any questions in the comments. Thank you very much.